Hi, Steve Lackmeyer here with the Oklahoman. Uh, forgive the noise in the background, but we're at Tower Theater where there's a lot of work underway in restoring not just the Tower Theater, but some of the adjoining storefronts as well. This is a historic preservation job. That means bringing the storefronts back to what they were, and that means bringing back its vitrolite glass facade. Now, vitrolite is something you can go down to Home Depot and buy, right? No, it, uh, they quit making it in the early 50s, and uh, we have scoured the country for this glass, especially the forest green, which uh, we picked up in Cleveland, Wisconsin. Um, it's, it was unused. It was sitting in an old glass shop, and then we also picked up some vitrolite in Akron and in St. Louis. I am told you're, you guys are the only ones doing this these days. Yes, we're the last two, probably in the world. There's people that do some jobs here and there, but we, uh, you know, we're really, we got the website, we got 30 tons of glass. We're, we're kind of the go-to people. How did you start doing this? When did you start doing this? Uh, I started in uh, 1985. My first job was in Blair, Nebraska, and it was also forest green and jade. And... Uh, uh, the installer, Don Cavasy, who had been installing in St. Louis since the early 60s, said, you know, nobody's doing this, you might want to try it. So I, I tried it and started collecting glass because it doesn't know, matter if you know how to install it if you don't have the glass. So I started collecting glass back in 1985. How do you go about doing that? Uh, we go to a building, usually people email us or call us, say, you want this glass? We go there, we take it off. Tedious. There's a reason why nobody else is doing this. <laughs> it's a tedious, uh, you gotta be very patient to get it off the buildings without breaking it. Why was this popular to begin with? Why was it in vogue at one point? Well, in 1925, the Art Deco Exposition in, in Paris, France, brought all these industrial materials. It was a, it was a d industrial facade for machinery and for restrooms, because it was non-porous and when they discovered that germs caused disease, they realized that glass was better than marble. So they switched over in 25 and they brought all these colors into vogue and uh, chrome, stainless steel, aluminum, and glass was part of that. So that became very popular in the mid 20s to late 30s. Why did it fall out of favor? During the war, they quit making glass this way. This glass is ground to a mere finish and uh, they quit making glass that way. They started making glass differently. And so it just, you know, it was expensive too. It was not a cheap uh, material and it was, wasn't cheap to install. So they moved to tile and that was really the 40s and 50s tile became very popular into the 60s. And then now you have granite and marble, which is a little more expensive, but the, the glass, they quit making the glass this way. So it was over by the mid 50s. Now, it's pretty sturdy though, isn't it? Well, you know, you can hit it with a hammer and not break it, or you can set it down on a little rock and it'll crack it right in half. Huh. So it's glass, it's crystal, you know, so you have to be careful of how you handle it. Why are people reinstalling this material? Well, you know, there's storefronts around the country in these old downtowns, and, uh, you know, they may be the last one in the downtown. So they want to keep it as a piece of history the Art Deco period. So that's what we do. We go around these little towns. We did the Washita Theater in Cordell in Western Oklahoma. Hank here has done uh, Master, Master Cleaners. Cleaners. Uh, so they're just little gems, you know, that uh, people want to preserve and they twinkle. So that, that adds to the, the glamor of it. The Master Cleaners job, I got to cover that after it was done. That truly was a wonderful change for that building back to its original appearance. It had those 70s style wood shingles covering up its old facade. Talk to me about how you work with this material. Um, basically you cut it to size because nothing is the size that you actually need it. So everything's cut to size and being a tile man previously before I learned vitrolite, you know, you just design it yourself. So it's really just on the fly is how you design it. You get what you get with the glass and sizes whatever we can take off the wall it's all we can get so really you just get a chance to design the building yourself and then it's all kind of in your head the uh how long does it take to 
work with a piece of glass for one fitting? What do you do? You have to clean it, wash it, cut oh, it. What, yeah. what do you do? Uh, remove the daubs off the back, the existing glue daubs, and you have to clean it. Uh, you have to clean the edges as well. You know, we stone them down with a uh, whetstone, and then cut it to size. It has to be completely clean. You don't want any scratches on the front, so it all gets cleaned with paint thinner or soap and water. So, talk to me about where the glass uh, is being installed here. The glass is being installed at 411 on the front, or 441, excuse me, on the front of this building where it originally was before. So where it had been missing, we're just putting it back in the same spot. Was there any of the original material left when they pulled off the fake facade? No. <laughs> Most of this glass has come from about five different states. So it's all salvage material, we pull it off the walls. Like Tim says, you have to be seriously careful when you pull it down because that's all you got. Just, you know, it's just not a Home Depot product. How long does this job take the two of you? Uh, anywhere from a week to three weeks. Just depends on the facade, how bad, how bad a shape is the substrate in, and then, you know, what we decide to do for sizes to make it look proper in the cuts. So this is a three week job? Uh, so far it's been about two weeks and we're still got eh, probably another week to go. So yeah, I'd say three weeks. And we're visiting with Drew Upchurch with Lingo Construction. Drew, uh, we just had a fascinating uh, visit mm -hmm. with uh, Hank and uh, Tim mm -hmm. who are installing the Vitrolite. How important is it to have folks like this still around doing this fairly rare craft? Mm -hmm. Tim, Tim's one of a kind. Um, when we started looking for someone that can do this trade, uh, you don't find them. I mean, if you Google vitrolite, Tim's at the top of the list. So he, he goes around collecting uh, this tile that's no longer made. Uh, it's a glass tile uh, and stores it and, and then comes to a job like this and reinstalls it. I mean, with our goal to get it back like it was originally. So he's found those same colors as what was on this building when it was built in the 30s. And he's putting that back. Lingo Construction's been doing a lot of historic redevelopment projects. A lot of people don't understand part of the key is finding people like Tim, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. I mean, our goal for most of these renovation projects is typically to bring them back to how they were originally because so many modifications have been made. So um, trades like him that, that do a specialized task like this are very rare. So we're, we're thrilled to have him here. We're really seeing a transformation taking place here at Tower Theater and the adjoining retail spaces. Talk to me about where construction is now and when we're expecting to see a first opening take place. Yep. Schedule's going very well. So we're working on the core and shell right now and then we have a tenant working on a bar space and then there's a three theater component to it. So we're moving along. Core and shell's slated to be done towards the end of the year and then the theater's early next year. Mm -hmm. Um, and when it's all said and done, how does this rank for you as far as, I'm asking you to choose a favorite baby, but this has got to be one of your favorites. It is. I, I got the pleasure to work on the Braniff building for Sandridge and spent two years on that. Love that. This, this is a treasure in the city. I mean, just the sign alone's uh, a blessing to get to work on. So we're thrilled when we love working with Wanzer and Dodson and Sellers. So... And to relieve any panic out there among those who see the letters gone right now, it's okay. Yep. They exist. All the neons getting replaced new, and then they're restoring the ceramic letters, and they'll start installing that here in the next few weeks. So it's probably a month, month and a half away from being on. So there may be a celebration. Uh, that's up to the owners, how they, how they uh, switch, that, switch that on. So. All right. Well, thank you for uh, joining us. And uh, this really is a wonderful uh, project. All of us are very excited. Thank, Thank you. you.